Okay, so today is a shorter video uh, and a bit more of a retrospective than actually like fixing something. Uh, this is a Asus Zephyrus uh, G15. Um, I think it's the 2021 model. Uh, model number is GA503QS. Um, it has a Ryzen 9 5900HS and an RTX 3080 in it. Uh, this was given to me by a coworker. Uh, he was using it one night and it just died and crapped out on him. Um, he needed a new laptop, so he went out and bought one, but asked if I wanted to take a crack at it because it died. It was going to go in the landfill and get recycled. Um, so I took a crack at it to see if I could fix it. Uh, minor spoiler alert, it's already fixed. I, uh, like with most things that I kind of tend to do, I, I took a look at it before doing any kind of filming to see if I could actually figure out what's wrong with it, because if I can't figure out what's wrong with it, or if I can't find hints as to what's wrong with it, I, I don't want to make a video or anything about it, because there's nothing to make a video about, right? Um, so I already fixed it. So I'm going to talk about what I did to find it, what was wrong, uh, a theory as to why it happened, and then uh, I'll solder on a replacement part. So it works. It does turn on right now. My, what happened was something caused a capacitor to, to go bad. It, it exploded all over the board. Um, I have that right here. We're going to attempt to use this. So this is the resistor that died. I'll put a picture of it on the board uh, when I found it. It was, it was black. It, it was scuffed. Got more scuffed after I tried to look at it. Um, but it was, uh, it, it was blown, right? It, it was black. It was not doing anything. I didn't get any, you know, working info out of it with a multimeter. So this, this went bad. Uh, that was located <clears throat> right here on the board. So that was located right here. And I, uh, I desoldered it using my uh, soldering iron, not my soldering station or my hot air gun, uh, and the whole thing sprang to life. I plugged the battery back in, turned on, boots to the BIOS. There's no hard drive, so there's no operating system to install to, but uh, turned right on. Now, I'm not an electrical engineer, um, but you probably need one of these or they wouldn't have put it on the board. So I've got replacements here that I ordered off of Mauser. You can kind of see they're a little wider, not as long, but they are the same voltage and they have the same microfarad rating. So they should be a simple drop-in replacement. So we're going to do that today. We're going to install this uh, new resistor. Before we get to that, and as my uh, soldering iron heats up, I'm going to talk about what I did to find it. So we don't need to see the whole board. Uh, I took off the heat sink just to get to the board, took the whole thing apart. This battery connector is ass. Um, you slide this connector back and then the whole battery pops off. This sparks like nothing that I've ever... It sparks to high hell every time I try to plug it in and it scares me. So we're just going to leave it unplugged because we need to. Duh. I'm actually going to take the screws out of here as well so the battery is away from any kind of heat. So what I did, I took off the heat sink. Um, I actually removed the liquid metal that was on here. I, I needed to be able to flip the board over a lot, and I couldn't do that with, with the gallium or whatever. It is just flowing all the place. So I removed all of that, and I replaced it with just bog-standard thermal paste. I realized that's not going to run as cool. I'll be honest, this thing runs really hot um, with a thermal paste on it. And in the BIOS, the CPU hits 90 degrees Celsius before the fans kick in. Part of that's fan curve. And uh, I don't see a place in the BIOS to change it, but hopefully when I get an SSD in here and put Windows on it, it'll uh, uh, we can get some kind of fan curve software to improve that. But it gets really hot before the cans kick in, and I think that the heat is part of the problem why this died. Uh, according to the internet, uh, a lot of these things have problems with them overheating and then just kind of dying, uh, with nobody really knowing what to look for, and ASUS just offering you know, you to pay them for a replacement motherboard for basically the cost of the laptop from everything that I could find. Sounds a lot like their ally in that SD card slot debacle. Um, so what I did to test it was I took off the heat sink and I, I started plugging in things, right? It's like the laptop's dead. What's the worst that happens when I plug in a charger? And I started following, um, I started following the traces from power to CPU and everything to try and find if there was a short somewhere. 
Uh, I did that both with battery power and I did that both with the with my MacBook Pro charger through the USB-C ports down here. And then I eventually cut the wall out the charger from my coworker and I plugged it in here and followed the same paths to where it goes. One other big resource that helps that I will link in the description was a website called Bad Caps. It's a forum. Uh, a lot of people over there have schematics to things. Um, they so happen to have a revision of this board that was close enough for me to work with and uh, helps me order the replacement part. All right, because you know these things don't have labelings on them. So I plugged in the battery, tested that, plugged in the wall, and started testing things. <clears throat> Underneath here, uh, this little metal part is part of the heat sink. It's attached to this heat pipe here, uh, is an inductor, right? This gets really hot when I plug things in. I thought, oh, well, there's a short in this inductor, right? It's like, it's hot. It's getting really hot really fast. Um, I ordered a close enough replacement and uh, it turns out that, that that wasn't it, right? I didn't even bother putting the replacement on here because after some more research and asking some questions online, I discovered like, yeah, they're supposed to get hot. It gets really hot, um, probably because I didn't have its like heat pipe on it, um, but it got really hot. So it means that that wasn't the problem. Uh, what I did kind of just hypothesize was that this section right here, I'm not going to use that. This section right here is the AC power and power delivery sub circuitry for the board. So whenever you plug in a charger through USB-C ports or through the wall adapter, it flows here. And then this subsection of circuits and, and inductors and capacitors and stuff flows it through the rest of the board off the GPU and CPU and everything else. So my my hypothesis was, this was before I discovered that the, the, the resistor here had, had died. I'm not getting power up to the CPU, I'm not getting power to the fans, the Wi-Fi card, I'm not getting power anywhere. So it's like, it's not coming from something. The battery had power, my, my P, you know, chargers both work, um, and I could get power here on these by testing their uh, their pins and then it would stop it wouldn't get here it would come here but it would so somewhere in that chain it was dying um and then i i you know took the magnifying glass that i just showed up a minute ago and i just started looking even more and i was about to give up because i was like wow something just died and i can't figure it out and i saw just you know peripheral vision you see it right at the end um i saw that this resistor had just blown up it was black well that's the obvious thing i was like computer's already dead. If I take off a capacitor, what's the worst that happens, right? It's, things already dead. Um, so I did that. And then the computer sprang to life. Press the power button. Everything turned on. So I, I was like, okay, cool. It all works. And like I said earlier, there's a reason that they designed these circuits this way. There's a reason there's a second capacitor. So we're putting a second capacitor back in. Now what we're going to do is I've got my uh, soldering iron heated. I'm going to take one of these replacements. I'm actually now going to drop the dead one because I no longer need it for uh, show and tell purposes. We're going to solder a new one on. I'm going to set this down with my tweezers, my little forceps here. I've got, got my soldering iron right here that we're going to use. And we're going to just not do that. Mm. We've got this here. I'm going to heat up some solder. Don't use the plastic tweezers with a uh, soldering iron. So I'm going to hold it there, heat up the solder. So that's in. I'm going to take my multimeter here real quick. I'm just going to do a simple continuity test to make sure that I didn't accidentally bridge something beneath that solder pad. Like I said, not my... Um, Best solder job, but um, continuity is fine. I'm sure, resistance is also fine because it's brand new. Uh, but hey, it's fine. So there are, are um, two ways that this is going to go. We uh, will either um, plug in something or turn it on, and it's going to not boot. Uh, there's three ways I guess it could go. It'll uh, not boot because maybe something else is wrong on the board, in which case uh, I might just leave this resistor off. Uh, it'll boot up just fine, right? Because we put in a new resistor and nothing's changed because we took the bad one out. Or, uh... Fuck, are these capacitors? What did I order? <laughs> these are capacitors. I was right the first time. <laughs> I don't... Ooh, there's one not an electrical engineer. Um, okay, yeah, so it'll either boot up just fine, it'll, it'll not turn on because something else is broken, 
or it'll spark in my face and I'll, uh, I'll get a nice little face full of humbling power. Get the battery reseated. And uh, I'm gonna wind up lifting this up so we're gonna put all the screws back in too. All right. Like that, yep. <laughs> I was uh, I was really thinking that that was not the likely one. I was expecting it to actually just not turn on. Um, <laughs> it startled me. I'm gonna call that here. I'm gonna, oh, actually, you know what? It's content. I'm gonna take this back off. We're gonna see one if it does that again. I'm glad I used the battery because I actually don't want to lose my chargers. I want to make use of it if, it if this doesn't turn on. So we're going to take this off, see if it turns back on. And if it does, I mean, at least it turns on and, I'll, and then I can dig into this later. Um, but I'm not going to spend the power and the memory on my phone recording something that's going to take me potentially days to debug. So for the sake of this, we're going to take that back off. So in my quest to do continuity checks, I think I actually did bridge something by accident. They're really tiny. Like I said, use a use a hot reef use a hot air reflow station. Don't use don't use a soldering iron for this. Am I being lazy? Probably just blew this whole thing up. Oh my god, I hate this battery connector. <laughs> okay, so it's plugged in. The first boot always seems to take uh, a long second. But... Oh, hey, okay. <laughs> I um, really didn't like any of that. Let's turn that off. Turn it back on. I heard a pop when I pressed that button. I'm not going to pretend I didn't hear or see that. Okay, so it works off battery. Plug this in here. I'm gonna get ready to pull it out really fast. Okay, and uh, I guess that's hard to see, but the orange light is on right there. And I actually haven't turned this on in like a week because I've been waiting for the parts to arrive. It's down to 80, uh, it's a 58% battery. And it's charging, right? Because the light's on. Um, but that is a lot. I'm gonna turn you off. It's a, that actually just lost a lot of battery, even though it hasn't been turned on. So um, I'm gonna call that there. I might do some more debugging on it, and I'll uh, I'll see if I can figure out why it's <laughs> why it did that. Um, I'm amazed it's still turned on. I'm gonna be honest about that. I, I I've never attempted to fix a laptop before. I can be honest about that. It's it's new to me. They're tiny. I'd rather I'd rather fix them with anything else. I um, I will link the capacitor in the description and all the other stuff I use that was super helpful. I don't know if that's the fix that this needs, but right now it turns on. It runs off of the wall charger, so I know that it's it can take these 200 watts that it's pumping through. Um, but I'm going to get this reassembled, which I, I won't show on video because when I was given this laptop, the screws were just kind of in a bag. So I'm going to, I have to figure out what goes where and uh, oh, I don't need to show that. So, you know, hey, it, it works. And uh, this went from being a potential repair to just a retrospective and me being scared. Thank you so much for watching because it is really nice. And, uh, you know, the next one won't... Uh, Next one will blow up in my face, so thanks for watching.